Hey, what's going on, guys? It's the Crypto Siege with another day in the life, in the crazy life that is the digital asset space. Good morning. Well, actually, I should say good afternoon. Happy Tuesday to you. Yeah, interesting times in the digital asset space. Very, very interesting times. Hey, guys, do me a favor. Hit the like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We are on a more rapid pace of, to 5,000 subs. And if you're a podcast person, be sure to check me out on all the major podcasts, um, whether that be Spotify or iTunes or Stitcher. It's uh, and the, you can follow me at the Crypto Siege at the Crypto Siege. And on Twitter, if you're a Twitter guy or a gal, you can follow me at Crypto underscore Siege, which is C E E J. Crypto underscore C J is actually what it is. So guys. Listen, so I know you guys have probably seen the, the video from Crypto Eddie talking about this company, a Penify or Pitify or whatever it's called. I believe it's a, a, pen, a Penify. And so, um, yeah, listen, great article, great uh, video, obviously, keeping us uh, informed and giving us a, a I commented on her video. Um, thanks for the heads up. But guys, please... Uh, do not think that in any way, shape, form, or fashion that this is a quote unquote, and I'm quoting and unquoting competition, right? And so, uh, listen, here's the thing that I, I will say uh, was, you know, having a marketplace in the digital asset space is a, is, is a big deal and it's important um, that we have it. I am not one um, on competition. I don't believe there is such a thing. I believe that. Uh, a better spot to be is in the creative space versus trying to compete with someone. But in terms of a company that may be in the same space <laughs> as Ripple, okay, a Pinify might be that company. But uh, you know, every every Google has a Yahoo, and every burger, every uh, McDonald's has a Burger King, okay, if you will. But this is the thing that I do want to point um, out to you guys is that. Um, they can, they can, Pinify is launching something that's pretty cool and it's pretty interesting. Uh, you know, this launches this ROXE, I don't know if they call it a Roxy, uh, for Instant Global Settlement, right? Roxy Instant Global Settlement Network. And then video, she did a great job. Crypto Eddie did a really good job as she always does, um, covering the different articles. And there was one that actually kind of pointed out the differences between this company, a Pinify, a Pin. Epiphany, I'm kidding, Epiphany. It's Epiphany, excuse me, Epiphany, right? Epiphany. Um, the differences between that company and Ripple, um, I, so there's some, you know, interesting points that they make about um, Ripple uses a digital, native digital asset that is XRP and Epiph Epiphany does not. Um, those things are cool. But the other difference I will point out to you, um, and, and I'll share that with you <clears throat> later on in the video, I brought this up because I know there's going to be some people asking, have you heard about Epiphany? Is that competition for Ripple and all those different things? And in my humble opinion, Ripple has no competition. If you, if you want to look in terms of competition, Ripple has no competition. There'll be other players in the space, but I don't think they will qualify as competition in my humble opinion. Another thing that I want to bring out um, and share with you guys, because I think this is important, um, Alex Yeet, um, she, uh, sent me some information this morning um, from uh, a tweet that Baba Cubs, we all know our friend, <laughs> our friend out there in the digital asset world, Mr. C. Baba Cubs, and uh, is an article from Forbes. And I think it's important because this is an update to the first article. We all remember this first article it was the NASDAQ uh, marketplace services that. Uh, the NASDAQ was launching. They did, in fact, launch it just in sometime in June, right? NASDAQ's new platform backed by R3, Digital Assets, Symbiont, and Microsoft may not be what you think it is. <laughs> yeah, and I think a lot of people are sleeping at the wheel on this. Now, this is a follow-up article by the same guy, Ben Jessel at Forbes, contributing author for Forbes. This is the follow-up article. It's an Aztec's digital asset boss explains future blockchain assets. And I'm going to bring this back, in my opinion, and tie this to this uh, epiphany uh, company. 
<laughs> and so you guys can kind of get what's really going on with these startups. Um, because in, in the startup world, one of the main goals for a lot of startups <laughs> is to be acquired, <laughs> right, and cash out. So last month, NASDAQ announced the release of its marketplace services platform, uh, market service, marketplace services platform, a SAAS-based uh, multi-cloud platform offering for marketplaces. Now, I know when I go through this, you guys are going to say, this is a little bit different than this Epiphany, uh, uh, Epiphany, Epiphany, my goodness. It's a little bit different than the Epiphany platform, and it is. But my point to this whole thing is, like I said earlier, startups at times, right, what they tend to do is get out into the marketplace and then hope and almost hope to, if you will, get acquired. It's not an almost. That's one of their objectives. So, and uh, NASDAQ. Uh, it's a company or it's a platform that could do a lot of acquiring, <laughs> right? So um, on top of their marketplace services platform is their digital assets suite, a DLT, distributed ledger technology agnostic offering aimed at providing clients with the ability to manage the full cycle, the full life cycle of digital assets. I reported on this in uh, a recent article from Forrest.com. This is a follow-up that provides a longer form write-up of my interview with Johan Toll, head of digital assets at NASDAQ Market Technology. Okay, looks like that's Johan Toll right there. So, United States moves close to the, okay, nope. Jessel is uh, asking now, NASDAQ has over 120 clients. So this is kind of a, a verbatim interview, right? Q&A. NASDAQ has over 120 clients across the broad spe spectrum of financial services providers. Where do you primarily expect to see adoption of digital assets taking place? The large incumbent investment banks or the smaller digital asset focused neo-digital challenger banks? So this is a great question. This is what Paul says. With the marketplace services platform, we are looking to meet the demand that we have seen out there. We are really providing an end-to-end -end platform to operate marketplaces across a variety of market models and industries. To that, we have added one product suite that is very much focuses on managing the complete digital asset life cycle. The complete digital asset life cycle, which is going to include some settlement and some finality, right? So it's very, very important to know. This is very much about streamlining everything into one harmonized service that can meet the needs for the multiple stakeholders out there. And I think we clearly see the demand to trade new types of financial instruments and assets. Okay, and so another point to note, if NASDAQ sees this, right, um, and Epiphany sees a thing, um, which one do you think has a better chance of winning in the marketplace? So we see demand from our classic market infrastructure operator client base and amongst incumbent marketplaces across multiple exchanges, pretty much spread globally looking to see how they can potentially issue, trade, and manage new types of financial assets. It's less about moving existing asset classes into this new world, but it's rather about identifying potentially existing bilateral manual trades going on in those asset classes, okay? Additionally, we see demand in other industries beyond capital markets, where there's an ask for institutional grade services for enabling marketplace to digitalize new types of assets, such as the insurance industry, healthcare industry, betting industry, real estate, and commodity agriculture industry, et cetera, wherever there is a need to actually, uh, wherever there's a need to actually more efficiently trade assets of value. Through the digital asset suite, we're looking to serve the full digital asset life cycle through one solution from issuance to risk management, settlement, 
and custody. All that is done through a streamlined platform that we call the Marketplace Services Platform. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go to one of the questions that I thought was really, really significant. Uh, but Mike, again, one of the points that I do wanna make is this is the NASDAQ with the heritage behind it, with the reputation behind it, with the um, powerhouse um, financial stability behind it to acquire whatever they want to acquire when they want to acquire it, if you will. Right? So uh, what does he say here? The so that's not home in the last class. Mm -hmm, the latter was okay. No, that's what the question that I wanted to cover with you guys. Really great interview, by the way. But it was one question that I wanted to cover. And he said, she has some really good questions. I think it's about the regulatory clarity. Yeah. Jessel says, having regulatory clarity around what licenses are required to own and operate a digital asset marketplace is going to be key for adoption. What are you seeing from the NASDAQ perspective here? He told says, everybody is now looking into how to move blockchain into covering institutional trading of digital assets. From my perspective, it's important to continue to look to ensure that you have the necessary regulatory approvals and you have the readiness from the ecosystem in the market that you want to transform. The regulators don't stipulate which technology you use here. Some might need to change eventually, but I think the existing regulations out there are very good. And I'm happy to see that most regulators around the globe have a very good understanding of the impact of moving into more decentralized distributed networks. So that's kind of an insider's view, right, on what's really going on with regulators. It's much easier nowadays to have fruitful dialogue with the regulators to ensure a good process and deployment. I think a lot of regulators across major countries have made good progress in ensuring that they have reports out there and that they have statements and thoughts around how they would respond to digitalization of securities as well as what is a security and what isn't a security. Utility and what is the cryptocurrency and so forth. There's much clarity now, is that right? Which is certainly helpful when we launch new technology products and services. And I, again, I believe this is from an insider's perspective and an insider's view. And so this much clarity that he's talking about, right? It's coming from the insider's view and hasn't been made publicly yet and put out, if you will, if you will, okay? Continuing the regulatory thought with some specific regulation around custody of digital assets in the United States, it continues to be a challenge given property law, rehypothecation, bankruptcy laws, and commingling of assets. Would you agree? Toll answers, the discussions are centered around both custody and finality in the ownership and when the actual ownership is transferred. That's why we are primarily focused on private permissioned networks where we believe you can much quicker reach the regulatory approvals required for both the custody party as well as the very important finality of the movement of the assets. Again, guys, I think it's important to know, I get it, Epiphany is trying to move into the marketplace. It's a big marketplace. We're talking trillions of dollars right? I get it. Kudos to them, right? But there's two, two things at play there. There's a reason why there's articles comparing this epiphany to Ripple. There's a reason for that. There's a reason why they're comparing the, the quote-unquote differences. Here's what I would argue. I would argue, and I listen, I'm not in the boardrooms, right, with epiphany, but I would argue that, that there are startups, right, like epiphany that get to the market. They see a, a demand in the marketplace, and they look to solve uh, that demand or answer that demand or solve problems in that particular space. But in the end, the goal is the, about being acquired, in my humble opinion, being swapped up. That is not the case, in my humble opinion, for Ripple, right? Ripple is looking to acquire, <laughs> not 
to be acquired. All right, guys, listen, I'm going to wrap up this video like I do all of my videos and remind you guys of this. Old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather us remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want to play in the same playground that we play in. Well, we allow, they don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in. Well, we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of men. Are you participating? Or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know, that the battle for you has already been fought and the victory is yours. Go get it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya. Bye.